Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey and really happy you're here. My subscribers, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode. I'm excited about today's uh, video because I am participating in Heidi Sonbull's fall slash Thanksgiving challenge. So Heidi Sample DIY, she has a fantastic channel. If you have not already seen her, really, really encourage you to go and check her out. I'm going to have a link to her video in the playlist or her channel in the playlist. Um, I'll also have a link to the playlist for this challenge in my description box. And I kept saying playlist, but yes, it'll all be in the description box. So I hope that once you are done watching my video, you will take a look at all of the other videos that are listed in the playlist um, because there are going to be a lot of fantastic crafters submitting videos and uh, showing you all of their amazing projects as well. So today's video, I am focused on fall yet again. I had a little bit of a lean towards Thanksgiving with one of the projects, I guess they could all be used for Thanksgiving. I didn't specifically do things that are Thanksgiving, um, but everything is fall. I hope that you enjoy. The skill levels range from, sorry, Sammy is knocking my camera. The skill levels range from very simple, very basic. One of them, I could probably barely even call it DIY, to a little bit more complicated this time. You guys, my favorite, favorite project in the whole world. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. And I will tell you a little bit more as we go. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on the crafts. So here we go with DIY number one. For this project, I am using this, it looks like a bag, but it's actually a box from the Dollar Tree. I also have a canvas. This is actually two pack, but I'm gonna be using one of these. It's actually a burlap um, canvas. My scissors, some of the mesh tubing from the Dollar Tree, as well as some Dollar Tree picks. So I'm actually gonna cut my box with my scissors and I'm just wanting to get that front panel. I'm using the side that does have the shimmer to it. It's like a metallic um, print, I guess, if you will. And then I'm just bending the edges over and gluing them down. I thought I was gonna have to trim them completely with the scissors, but then when I started working with it, I realized I could just fold it down and <laughs> using my scissors to secure it so that I don't burn my little fingers. Um, but this is where my finger protectors would probably come in handy. I just find myself not using them for whatever reason. So I've got my little panel here and it's nice and sturdy. I'm gonna break out one of my burlap canvases or frames, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna line this up where I want it. I am doing an offset because I'm planning on using my picks along the bottom there. So I'm just playing with it a little bit to try and figure out how I wanna do this and going to play with some of my picks. And once I kind of figure out what I wanna do, I'm gonna come in with my hot glue. I'm securing my, oh, I need a new hot glue um, baton. Uh, what, what do you call those sticks? I don't know. But anyway, I need to add one of those back in there. So anyway, lots of hot glue, securing it to my burlap. And then I'm also going to come in with my picks and decorate the bottom after I put my mesh tubing on. So I'm just going to use this to give a pretty edge around my decoration, my picture, whatever you want to call that. Um, so it'll also give it a little bit more dimension. So again, just using my hot glue, I'm starting at that bottom corner. I'm not going to be doing the bottom with this because I am going to be using my picks there. So I'm just going to be going around the three sides. So starting on the one side, going up around the top and then back down where I will trim it off there. So now I'm going to come in with my picks and again trying to decide how I want to layer them and I actually ended up cutting these leaves in half and I used both ends of the leaves. So the bottom parts that I trimmed off there I ended up just cutting 
the place where I had trimmed it a little bit more to make it a little bit pointy like the rest of the leaves so it actually ended up looking like the longer portions that I'd cut off. I don't know if that's making any sense at all, but I basically trimmed them to make them look pretty and for them to be usable as well. And then I cut off the little plastic ends. So I'm just layering these all on, tucking in some little leaves that I had left over from another pick that I had pulled apart. Goodness only knows when. <laughs> if you guys watch my videos regularly, you know that I am always pulling the picks apart because it just gives you a little bit more flexibility with how you use them. I'm coming in with some wheat and then these mini little, I don't know what these are, I'm trying to remember, the mini dahlias? I can't remember, I'm so bad with the flower names, you guys. Um, if you know what these are, um, give me a uh, comment in the description, or in the comments, not in the description box, sorry. I'm uh, up to the wire on this video, you guys. I'm racing against the clock and hoping I get it posted um, in time today. But in all things, give thanks. Super sweet. So here we go with DIY number two. Using another one of these gift box bags from the Dollar Tree. And you can see that the shimmer side is what I'm going to be using again. Um, I also have an 8x10 canvas from the Dollar Tree that I'm going to be using. And I'm showing you here that sometimes they don't have um, solid wood. So if you ever want to pick one of these up to use the wood frame, you want to check that before you pick it up. I'm also going to be using the moss from Waverly. And I think that is antique mustard or vintage mustard, maybe, by Folk Art. So a couple of different kinds of chalk paint. And then I had also shown you the Dollar Tree pumpkin picks that I'm going to be using. So I'm giving my canvas a coat, actually I gave it a couple of coats of the mustard color and then I was showing you that I'm going to be cutting this um, box again. And these are really solid, you guys. They're nice boxes. Um, so I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do that with my craft knife. I want to make sure I've got a nice even edge all the way around because of what I'm going to be doing with this. So I'm using one of my Dollar Tree rulers to help me out there and I just scored it around and then I went back through and cut it all the way through with my uh, my craft knife. I kind of bent it a little bit too to, along the score line to help me out there. So now I'm coming in with my moss chalk paint. I'm just going to do a rough edge around. I had started to tape this off and I wasn't finding that the line I was getting was going to be the right thickness, if you will, and so I just ultimately decided to do it by hand. So you can certainly feel free to tape it off. I was also worried I was going to pull off my paint. So so now I'm coming in with the part of the box that I'd cut off and I, you can see how I kind of pressed it in there with my floral foam to kind of score it where I wanted it and then I went ahead and cut it the rest of the way. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue this down just making sure I had it how I wanted it. I'm going to glue it in here in a second and then I'm going to cut it the rest of the way. So you'll see how I do that. <laughs> More glue. I go through so much glue, you guys. It's uh, funny. So giving it a lot of the hot glue. I'm putting it on the cardboard as opposed to on the foam, hoping not to melt the foam too badly. So once that's secured, I'm going to come in with my oh, Apparently I'm coming in with some more glue <laughs> to make sure that the, the sides are um, completely sealed on there as well. And then I will come in with my large um, old kitchen knife that has become part of my uh, crafting arsenal. Um, and I will trim this through. So I'm just going to, as almost like you would do a cake if you were doing a layer cake and had to trim it. I don't know if that's making any sense, but I'm using the sides of the cardboard to help guide where I need to slice that. So I just sliced that right off because I wanted it to be nice and flat and even with the edges of the box. So hopefully you're understanding what I'm doing. So now I'm going to take all my pumpkin picks and I played with this quite a bit trying to figure out how I wanted them in there. I knew I needed to trim off the little pick stems. Those, they're super easy to trim, you guys. Um, and then I was just playing with how I wanted them to go in here. And I'm keeping it flat on the table because ultimately I am going to be securing this to the 
uh, oh my goodness, canvas that I had painted earlier. Um, and so I just want to make sure that everything will lay flat up against the canvas. So hopefully that's making sense. So I'm using the, the table as my canvas um, surrogate right now. So once I have those all in there, I'm going to come in with some, I think this was reindeer moss or is it just floral moss. I guess it's just floral moss. This is also from the Dollar Tree. And just using my hot glue in there, I'm coming in from behind and then I'll also go in from the front as well. I just wanted to make sure that was all nice and filled in with the moss to cover up my floral foam and just uh, give a little bit of a base for my pumpkin display. And then I went in and trimmed off those little sticks that were sticking out in the back just so they wouldn't be in the way later. So you can see me coming back in with some more moss and just making sure the pumpkins are the way that I want them. So now I'm going to be securing it to my frame. And this did end up being a little bit larger than my frame. Yeah, I made a big mess there, so. <laughs> um, just going to secure this with some hot glue. I'm going all along the edge. I'm trying to err on having the glue fall into the box rather than the outside of the box just to keep my edges nice and pretty. And then more glue, um, putting a whole bunch of it on the foam this time because that's really going to be what's securing this ultimately to the canvas and just making sure that my edges are lined up, securing that down and making sure that it's adhering well to the canvas. So now I've got the other part of my box. I'm just going to steal this little ribbon hanger holder and I'm going to use that as my, my hanger. Now, I should have done this before I attached the um, decoration to the front of it. So I ended up using a whole bunch of paint sticks that I had handy um, to support it on either side so that I could, uh, could use my staple gun here to get these secured. But I recommend securing your hanger to the uh, frame prior. So here we go with DIY number three using this third Autumn Blessings box. Now these were all different sizes. I just thought they were adorable and I wanted to do something with them. So I am not going to be cutting this one. Instead, I'm using a bunch of picks from the Dollar Tree, some more um, of my floral foam, and I just cut it down to be able to fit inside of my little box bag the way that I want it. And then I'm going to come in with all of my flowers and I'm just going to make a flower arrangement, you guys. So very simple. You can use whatever flowers you want. You can use whatever colors you want. I just thought that this would be a really pretty piece for a centerpiece. It's something that if you're going to someone's home for Thanksgiving, I'm not really sure how we're going to do with Thanksgiving this year, given the situation, but um, I'm sure, or I would hope people will still be able to gather in um, their family units. So perhaps if you are being hosted for Thanksgiving, this is something that you could take along as a nice little hostess gift. Just something, something pretty and nice for the table, or just something to brighten your own home with, right? And of course, this one has the little red truck on it that everybody has been so excited to see this fall. So using a bunch of different picks, again, as always, just making it the way that it looks pleasing to my eye, right? And I actually did have some picks that I didn't pull apart for this one, so <laughs> let me know what you think. Here we go with DIY number four. For this, I'm going to be using some chenille stems. I have the gather sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. This is fantastic. I loved finding that. I've got um, some um, Buffalo Check wide ribbon. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I did get it half off. It was originally $11.99, so I got it for about $6. And then I have a whole bunch of picks from Hobby Lobby that I've had for a while, as well as a pizza screen that I'd gotten from Walmart a while back and just never got a chance to use. So I'm coming in with Cashew by Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to give my gather sign a couple of coats of paint. And this dried really quickly on here, so I was, I was happy with the progress I was able to make with the gather sign. It, um, it absorbed the paint nicely and it dried pretty fast, so it helped with uh, speeding my project along. So 
So once I had it all painted and dried, I did come in with my Waverly Wax. And this is brand new to me, you guys. I just picked it up at Walmart when I did my last Dollar Tree haul. I didn't tell you guys about the Walmart haul I had also done. <laughs> um, but I'm loving this Waverly Wax. I have never used it before and it went on really nicely. It did help to give it this wood grain kind of look and I was really happy with it. So if you haven't tried it, I definitely would recommend it. So coming in with my pizza screen, I am using my chenille stems. I'm just bending them in half so that they, I know where the center is basically. And I'm gonna come in through the back of the screen and I'm gonna twist it a couple of times. And this is what I'm gonna be using to secure my picks. So I did a couple of them and I'm going to be just securing my picks the way that I want them at the top of my frame. So just giving them a little twist and then I'll be cutting off the um, excess wire on these. I do want to leave a little bit so that it will remain nice and secure in the frame. So hopefully that's making sense. And when I do things like this, I do them symmetrically. So whatever I do on the right, I will do on the left. And I'm coming in with my greenery first. I've got a couple of different types of greenery that I'm using. That gives it color dimension, but also texture dimension. So I always like to use different types of, of greenery, different colors, and just layering everything on again in a way that looks pleasing to my eye. So this is not difficult, you guys. If you pick up a bunch of um, floral picks from the Dollar Tree or Walmart or wherever you like to shop for your picks, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, wherever, um, pick them up, um, pick up a, 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 oh my gosh, I can't talk, an arrangement of picks that looks pretty to you that you think would look nice together. And then you just layer them on as I showed you there. So I'm coming back in with some additional chenille stems. I probably shouldn't have bent them first, but because it just made it harder for me to attach them, but I'm just securing them with my staple gun and gave them a couple of staples each. And then that's going to allow me to secure my gather sign to my pizza um, grill pan whatever you call that, I've already forgotten. Um, so you'll notice that I did paint the back of my gather sign because I like to have things finished, but I did not bother to go in with the Waverly Wax on the back side. You certainly could, I just chose not to. So dropping my chenille stems through the grid, and then I will twist them at the back once I have it where I want it and make sure that it's nice and secure. So now I'm going to come in with some of my buffalo check. It's almost like a burlap kind of, eh, it's, I don't know, it's not really a burlap. It's a fabric ribbon, but it's nice and thick and heavy. And I am creating a loop. You've probably seen me do this before. And I'm just going to pinch it in the middle. And then I ended up um, just messing with it to get it to the way I wanted it. And then I used one of my little clamps that I picked up in the automotive section from the uh, Dollar Tree to just hold it the way that I wanted it while I got what I needed to make my tails. So there's my little clamp that's going to hold it for me. Okay, so now I am taking another length of the ribbon and I probably, if I had to do it over again, I would have cut that a little bit longer. I'd say that was probably about 16 inches if I had to guess and it was a little bit shorter than what I had hoped for because it's a thicker um, fabric ribbon so it just um, it ended up being a little bit bulkier and my knot ended up being thicker so my tails were not as long as I would have hoped but I went with it and it was fine and I still love how it turned out <clears throat> so as you saw I just tied that around the middle I had removed my clamp, tied this around the middle, just a simple knot at the back. That was all I did. And now I'm just fussing with it to make sure that my bow is the same on either side and getting it to the way that I want it. And then I'm going to dovetail my ends. You fold your ribbon in half and just cut it at an angle, low on the inside, high on the outside, shorter on the inside, longer on the outside, right? 
and that gives you what they call a dovetail. It just makes your ribbon nice and pretty, and it also helps to keep it from fraying a lot of the time. You always want to cut your ribbon on an angle to help keep it from fraying. So I'm coming in with a chenille stem. I'm just tucking it in through the, the knot, so just underneath the knot, and then I'll be able to secure that through my pizza pan as well. And then I'll secure it at the back. I am looping it around itself to make a hanger for this. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just twisting it around and then I was twisting the whole thing around just to make sure that it was nice and secure at the back. So now I've got a little hanger as well. There you go. And now that I'm happy with where everything is, I'm going to flip this over, secure my gather down make sure it's nice and tight, and then I'm gonna clip that off and just tuck it in behind, and that way you don't see that part of it. And there you have it. So here we go with the DIY number five. So for this, I am using a Dollar Tree little picture frame that I picked up, as well as the Be Brave calendar. And I am picking out this one image. It's every day is a new day, oh, new opportunity, excuse me, to make a, hap a new happy ending. I can't even read. I'm like brain dead, you guys. But um, so I am just going to open up my Dollar Tree frame. I'm gonna be taking out what's in there. I am gonna use the base of what's in there. So I'm just gonna remove that circular piece. And then it had like this, um, double-sided tape on there and so I just kind of cleaned that up a little bit and figured I could use that as part of what I needed to adhere this so I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want to trim this down and once I have it lined up I'm tracing and obviously my little tape measure is there so I did um, measure it to be sure but uh, I just traced around it now I'm using my my old school um, paper cutter to trim this down the way that I want it I've seen the really cute new uh, paper cutters. I just can't bring myself to, to pay for one when I already have that paper cutter. So maybe someday we'll see. So I used that double-sided tape, but then also securing this at the just at the corners with a little dab of hot glue. And then once I have it back in the frame as well, it's gonna be nice and secure, so no, no worries there. So I put it back in the frame, and then I decided that I didn't like the way that it looked with the copper frame. The frame is actually very pretty, but with the image, I just felt like it didn't really go. So I'm sliding some paper in here to protect my glass. And then I'm just gonna come in with the dregs of what is left of my Waverly chalk paint in, uh, in white. I think it's Waverly. You know what, that might actually be home decor. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's home decor, but it's the very last of my um, small bottle of white chalk paint. I mean, it was like almost dry. So I just did a dry brush technique to make it look a little bit aged. So here's my farmhouse contribution for this particular video. And here we go with DIY number six. This is actually a three in one. This is my inspiration picture from my friend Rebecca. I think these are adorable. I'm coming in with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white. I've got a whole bunch of, I've got my Arteza in gold, a whole bunch of chalk paint colors from Waverly Pumpkin to my Java by Home Decor, which is folk art brand. Um, so a whole bunch of different colors of chalk paint. So I am going to be making these for my friend Rebecca. She had uh, seen this picture that I showed you just a minute ago and said, hey, can you make me these? And I was more than happy to do that. So I've got a bunch of pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I'm just starting out by removing all of their little stems. And I'm going to come in first with my pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to paint actually four of these with the pumpkin. And then for two of the four, I'm gonna come back in with this other darker orange that I had um, painted or created for other projects. You've seen me mix that before and use it on other things. And then for the other two, I'm using Silver Lining Chalk Paint by Waverly. So giving all of that a nice good coat. And then while those are drying, I'm coming in with some dusters from the Dollar Tree. So I have two of these, I'm fluffing it out. 
and I'm actually gonna spray paint these you guys so the first one I tried to go in first with white and it just wasn't covering up the blue so I decided to go in with the black and I just ended up covering the whole thing and then figured I would spray paint my little stripe with the white again so this is gonna be my tail for our little raccoon friend and then I also sprayed the second one with a, a light caramel color spray paint that I had and then I went back in with pumpkin chalk paint to touch it up and make it a little bit more orange for my fox so now I am coming in with my orange my darker orange this is gonna be my fox and I am working with my white rust-oleum chalk paint to make his little chest right now you can see I was lining that all up so every single time I was lining up my two pumpkins because I am obviously painting their heads separate from their bodies when I'm all done with this I want to make sure that they line up so I was very careful to just keep checking um, between the two pumpkins where the center was how I wanted it to line up and all of that so right now I am painting his little ears and I have mentioned before I have I don't have a lot of experience with paint here I'm just darkening up that other orange paint with some more Java chalk paint making a deeper a deeper color and I'm gonna come in and uh, do some of the low lights on the pumpkin just to give it some dimension with the um, creases in the pumpkin but as I was starting to say I don't have a lot of painting experience I am NOT a fine painter you know I'm learning as I go with paint um, so I don't know if I'm doing this the right way or not you guys but essentially I am coming in um, with my lighter colors first and using those as a base and then I will come back and uh, layer on my darker colors I guess my mindset on that or my thought on that was that I would be able to better cover up lighter colors with dark versus the other way around so for the most part that is what I did there are some instances where I used the darker paint first and that was really because um, if I noticed in the picture that that was the predominant color over top um, I don't even know what I'm trying to explain. There, there were some instances where I did it the other way around, <laughs> but I was really just trying to go with the, um, the pictures. So I did have this um, inspiration picture next to me and I was using it as a guide and a reference throughout this project. I did not just do this um, from memory or off the top of my head because I, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not that good. <laughs> so now I am coming in on my little owl I've done a lot of the feather work right with the other paint colors and now I'm trying to paint his eyes now the paint color that I used here first is um, summer porch but I decided that it was a little bit too light so I did end up coming back in with Arteza electric yellow so using the electric yellow, brightening up his eyes, and I thought that that was um, a much better fit for what I was looking to do on this. So now I am coming in, and I am sorry that a lot of this is out of frame, you guys. I need to try and get better with my camera angles and try to, to help with uh, making sure that you guys can see what I'm doing here so please forgive me but I'm coming in with this darker brownish orange paint and I am defining um, his little I guess nose line and brow line up to his ears and now I'm coming and this is the fox now so now I'm coming in and painting his eyes I'm also using the Arteza electric or electric orange electric yellow for his eyes so there he is you can see what I've done so far I had also done his little mouth I'm not sure if I mentioned that before so now I'm coming in back on mr. owl coming in with some black and I'm going to be defining his eyes so he's got these fun eyebrows that come up off of, um, of his eyes so just trying to make sure that I'm getting the right dimensions I'm referring to my picture 
and then I'm going to come in and uh, outline his eyes and do his little eyeballs. Hopefully you can see a little bit better here what I'm doing. I promise I will get better with the, the camera angles. You should see the way that I have everything rigged up <laughs> at my crafting table. So it's really difficult for me to uh, rearrange things right now because, I mean, let's just say that there's duct tape involved. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I appreciate you bearing with me as I do my best to, uh, to show you what I'm doing here. And I, I kept you know, having to remind myself that I needed to hold the piece at an angle that would best help you to see what I was doing. So I appreciate your patience with me, but I'm coming in and continuing to work on his eye so you can see what I've do done there so far. And then I'll go in and do the other eye. I ended up flipping him upside down to do his other eye because I just wasn't comfortable with trying to get that um, that eyebrow thing going. So you can see I'm actually outlining his eye first. I'm not real great with liquid eyeliner either, you guys. So I'm thinking the whole time, oh my goodness, this is like putting on liquid eyeliner. But um, doing my best with it and trying to figure out how I'm going to do that eyebrow on this side. And so like I said, I ultimately flipped him upside down <laughs> so that I could um, you know, use my, my right hand to the best of my ability. Um, again, I'm so sorry that I'm out of the frame here, but I will show you again in a second um, how I did that. And you'll notice at the base of my pumpkin, I forgot to tell you about this. So these Dollar Tree pumpkins have ridges on them. So I did go in with some um, spackling and I filled in all of those edges and then sanded them down a little bit. So that's why you're seeing um, what you saw on the bottom of my pumpkin there. And then I just painted back over it again because the ridges were bothering me. So there's his sweet little face so far. And now I'm coming back in and doing his nose. Again, referencing my picture. I'm just going to fill that in in black. Isn't he sweet? Our wise little owl. So back to Mr. Fox, I am now going to do the uh, detail on his little mouth. So if you picture, again, I know that you can't see what I'm doing very well, but if you picture like a cat or a dog and that little smile that they have um, that is almost like a little bit of a W, that's what I was doing there. And then I'm going to come in and do his little nose as well. And I'm just using fine pointed paint brushes here, you guys. I was just using small paint brushes that were going to give me as much control as possible for this detail work. So I would just say, take your time. Just a reminder, this is sped up about two and a half times as fast as I was actually going. So, and I've cut a lot of the stuff out, right? Just for the sake of making sure that this video wasn't three hours long, right? So take your time, be patient with yourself, uh, give yourself a break, and you can do this. So his sweet little face is starting to come together. I'm just going in with some black to detail his ears, and now I'm going to do his eyes as well, and he's got these nice big black eyes. And I did leave a tiny little dot of yellow in the center just to give him a little bit of um, light in his eyes. Because if you think about it, when you look at someone or a picture or an animal, you'll always see a little bit of light reflected in their eyes. It helps them to make um, to look like they're alive. You know, if you have it completely black, it's just going to look very flat. So. just going in and defining his eyes as well. Look at the sweet little face. You guys, I was, I have to say, I was really proud of myself because I've not ever done anything like this. Like I said, I'm not a, a um, trained painter. You know, this is really just attempt and see what I can do. I am not an artist. Um, my art teachers would vouch for that <laughs> back in um, grade school and high school, you know, I love to craft, um, but I, I definitely, I, I don't, um, if you, if I had to try and sit down and paint someone, 
it would be like a stick figure. <laughs> it really wouldn't be good. So anyway, I'm working on our little raccoon guy now, and I'm gonna come in and outline what will be his face. I'm referencing my picture again, so I'm just taking my time. Again, this is sped up, so you can see how slow I must be going if, um, if I've got this sped up two and a half to three times. So just outlining his little face, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill all of that in. And this is plaster. That's the color that I'm using here. On my owl, I had used cashew for his chest. On my fox, I had used white, and this is plaster, which is like a, um, a cream color. So now I'm showing you how he's gonna look when he's put together, my little owl. So while my raccoon is drying his little chest and face so that I can continue on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my owl and my fox together. So I'm using just little skewers from the Dollar Tree. They came in a pack of a whole bunch. I don't even know how many were in there. 30, 50, a whole bunch. So I'm poking a little holes in my pumpkin where I want my four little dowels to be and I'm securing them with glue, hot glue. So hot gluing that, sticking them in there and I'm gonna let that cool. So I'm preparing my little fox as well. And then once those are all cool, I'll be able to press down the head on top. Now, you don't wanna just try and push it right down on top of here or all of your dowels will collapse inside the base pumpkin. So you wanna just very gently use your fingers to help guide the dowels and help press in every single one while supporting the dowel, or not dowel, but the skewers. Hopefully you're understanding what I'm saying. You don't wanna just try and push it right on there or it's not gonna go in and it's just gonna collapse inside the other pumpkin. But once I had my poles made, I hot glued that as well and put it back on. And here he is so far. So setting him aside, gonna do the same thing with my little fox. And there he is put together. So now I'm gonna come in with some air drying clay. I picked this up from Walmart and it does not need to be baked or anything like that. You don't need a kiln. This is air dry. So this is another new thing for me, you guys. I I don't normally work with clay, so I was excited to try this. Um, I'm just gonna cut off a little slab. Honestly, I, at this point, I have no idea how much I even need, so I figured, well, I'll start with that and see how it goes. And I'm just going back to my Play-Doh days, which are years behind me, <laughs> to try and figure out what I wanna do here and shape this into my little pumpkin stems that I wanna make for my little guys. And then I'm just making sure that it's going to fit on their little heads. And I did leave it positioned on the little pumpkin guys overnight to let it dry so that it would have the same shape as the surface on which it was going to be adhered later on. And I did that for all three of them. So the next day when they were all dry, I came in with my Arteza gold chalk paint and I'm just painting my little stems gold. And I said chalk paint. This is not chalk paint, you guys. My Arteza Gold Acrylic Paint. And this is actually an outdoor grade acrylic paint and I've been using it a lot recently and uh, really have been happy with the Arteza acrylics. So now I'm coming in with my Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I decided, you know, it's just not as dark as I wanted it. So I went and grabbed my elephant chalk paint also by Waverly. And I'm gonna come in and do the um, dimensions with this. Now this ended up being a little bit too dark. So once I had all of my little crevices um, done, I don't even know how to explain that other than that. Um, I did come back in with some of the base color and I toned it down. So tried to blend that in and just made it look a little bit more natural rather than these harsh stripes all the way through. I had left them on the owl as more solid stripes. In hindsight, I might have wanted to go back in and lighten those up a little bit too, um, but I did not. And I still love how he came out, so it's not, uh, not the end of the world there. 
but um, but I did come back in with a silver lining also in the places where it was the silver lining as the, the base paint color and just softened up all of those lines because they're really supposed to be shadows on the pumpkin for some dimension not necessarily stripes so hopefully that helps explain what I was doing there so once that's all done and dry, I've got my little guy's um, body here, and I'm going to come in and paint his little chest. He's got um, just his little fur kind of uh, designed, if you will. I don't, I don't know. I'm just following the picture, you guys. So coming in and doing little feathery strokes because I'm also keeping in mind that these guys do have fur. Not literally, but you know, they're supposed to be furry, right? They're little furry creatures. So um, these are not solid lines. They are very feathery. And coming in and doing a little bit more of the detail work on his little fur and making him look like he's got uh, something going on there. And I did that all around the, the base pumpkin for this one. So then I came in with a small teeny tiny little brush to define around his face and this is the elephant chalk paint again so I'm just that little feathery strokes all the way around his little face so hopefully you can see better there what I was doing and then coming in and using feathery strokes to create his ears so this is one place where I did use the darker paint first and then I came back in to the plaster color to, uh, to highlight his ears where I wanted the plaster color. And then tried to do his ear the same on the other side. I have to say that I did not succeed in making his ears or his little face completely symmetrical. And normally that would bother me on stuff, you guys, but I, th I feel like if I hadn't pointed it out, you probably wouldn't even notice because he's just so stinking cute that it really doesn't even bother me. Like, I, I know that it's not symmetrical. Like, I can see that it's not symmetrical. But like I said, it just, it's almost like it looks like it's supposed to be that way anyway. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. When you get to see the whole thing finished, you'll have to let me know if you agree that um, it really doesn't uh, throw you off. It, it just, it looks like it's, how it should be, even though it's not symmetrical. I don't know. I guess in real life, none of us are actually perfectly symmetrical. So I don't know, maybe it gives a nod to that. I'm not sure. But I'm coming back in again with uh, the elephant and just giving some more uh, detail around his eyes, trying to figure out where all of that should be. And then I'm coming in, before I filled all that in, I came in and did his eyes with the black because I know that there are places where I need the plaster color to show through for his eyes. So I just, I didn't want to get too far into filling in his face before I had his eyes set where I needed them. So coming in again, very small brush. I'm just using black and I am going to be making sure that I leave a little plaster um, color spot on his eyes and then filling in the rest of it with the black. And I will come back later and just touch it up a little bit with the plaster because I didn't leave quite as much of it as I had wanted. So doing his other eye, and then I'm gonna be coming in and filling in the rest of his face. So coming back with the elephant chalk paint and filling in all around his eyes. Now just defining the outline of his eyes with the black again because again some of that will be defined with the plaster in there and then I'm coming back with my plaster color and giving his ears the little plaster um, shading that he needs again feathery strokes on that and then I'm going to come in and clean up the eyes as I mentioned so he's got those little I don't know, kind of half moons underneath his eyes with his the whites of his eyes that you can see. 
and then also the little little dot of light in his eyes that just help make him look so adorable so you can see there he's starting to come together and then he's going to come in and do his nose and his little mouth and this is the black chalk paint again and i'm using black by home decor folk art little oval nose and then going to paint his mouth and again I'm sorry that I don't have this at a better angle for you guys to see but it's just a little simple smile of his mouth just a straight um, not straight line but a curved simple line look at that I am so proud of myself you guys give me a thumbs up if you like this and leave me a comment I was very pleased with myself I'm not even sure I really want to give them away anymore. <laughs> I really hope Rebecca's happy with them. I think she's going to be really thrilled because I just think that they are adorable. It's going to be hard to part with them. But you know what? To be honest, I, I've been doing so much that I don't even, I'm starting to run out of room in my house. So it's probably good that I'm giving them away because they'll be in a very happy home. <laughs> so here we go with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you have not already subscribed, please hit the subscription button as well as the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Sammy wanted to say goodbye too. So thank you so much again for watching. Until the next time, be well, <laughs> be kind. <laughs> <laughs> and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.